Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at 878 Vikings from Academy Games. Now this is in a family of games where they've also done one in the Revolutionary War. They've done one for the French and Indian War. And this one takes place uh, during the time of the Viking invasions of England. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get down to the table. I'm going to provide a very basic overview of how the game plays. There is a lot of minutia in this game and I'm not going to be able to touch on every single aspect of it. So I'm just going to and basically give you an idea of how each of the phases of each round or turn plays out and then we'll come back with some final thoughts in just a few moments. So here I have a game of 878 Vikings set up for you from Academy Games. Now the game can be played uh, from anywhere from two to four players. And if you play with two players, then you'll simply have a Viking side, a Viking player, and an English player. Uh, you can also play with three players where uh, one person can either control one or the other side and the other two will, will control one house or one faction. In four players, of course, you'll have two players on each side, each controlling only one faction. Turn order is based on these faction cubes that are used in the game. And as you can see, a black faction cube is already out there, denoting that the uh, Norsemen are the ones that take the first turn in the game. And then the rest of the faction cubes are placed into this bag and uh, they are drawn at the end of every turn to see who goes next. So at the end of the Norseman turn, we'll stick our hand in the bag, uh, pull out one uh, cube, and now the house car will go, and so forth and so on. Once all four cubes are out there, they're all placed back into the bag. The round marker is moved over to round two, and then you continue going, and so forth and so on. Now the game will consist with a, of a maximum of seven rounds. And as you can see here, Alfred the Great will come in in round five if the Vikings have not achieved their victory conditions yet. At the bottom of the board, we see the victory condition track for the Vikings. And what this basically means is that if the Vikings have taken over a number of nine or more city provinces or shires, in the game by rounds five, six, and seven, then uh, the game will have won if all four treaty cards have been played. Now a treaty card is a card that is a movement card, but once you play it, out of your deck, it is placed up here in one of these specific places, depending on what faction you're playing. And if all four treaty cards are out at the ends of round five, six, and seven, and the Vikings have conquered nine city shires then or more, then the game is over with the Vikings having won. But if the Vikings ever have 14 or more city shires conquered, then they automatically win the game. Additionally, if at any point there are no Viking control markers on the board at all, in other words, all the English have uh, reconquered all of the city shires on the board and there are no victory uh, Viking tokens on the board, then the English automatically win. Now, with all those victory conditions out of the way, we can basically take a look at what each round will look like. And each turn consists of uh, five different phases. And those phases are the reinforcements phase, the leader phase, the movement phase, the battle phase, and the draw phase. Now for the English, the reinforcement phase mainly consists of making sure that they put troops out onto the board in all of these reinforcement city shires that have this uh, logo on them. It looks like a regular city shire logo, except it has the little tower uh, in the middle of the logo. And depending on which player you are, either House Carl or Thane, then that's how many troops you will put out. For example, if it's the House Carl's turn, they will simply put two troops in Winchester. If it's the Thane turn, they will put one troop in Winchester, one troop in Oxford, one troop in London, and so forth and so on. For the Vikings, the reinforcement round has to do with the uh, leader invasion deck. Now, as you can see here, the Vikings start with Halfden's great heathen host uh, already on the board in which uh, they get 17 Norsemen and 8 Berserkers. 
But the first Viking player of every turn, whether it is the Norsemen or the Berserkers, will choose to reveal the top card. And that means that this is the kind of reinforcement that they will get. Either it's going to be a reinforcement card like this, or it's going to be another leader that's going to bring his army onto the board. And again, this um, card will tell you where they can invade as well. Additionally, in the reinforcement phase, any troops that are in the fled portion of the board are able to be put back into play. For the English, they can be put in any reinforcement city. And for the Vikings, they can go to any Viking-controlled uh, coastal shire or a leader card, whichever the player chooses. Now, during the leader phase, that's when uh, the different factions will be able to use their leaders on the board and move the uh, armies that the leader has on its card around the board and battle with them. The only uh, real restriction here is that uh, the faction whose turn it is must have a kind of army, a, a one of their own models in the army in order to move that army uh, from time to time. So if, if a Thane character wants to move an army, there has to be at least one green army or model in that army. If House Carl wants to move it, they have to have at least one blue army in that army. So uh, that's the main caveat. And that also goes for the main movement phase as well. So to exemplify the movement phase, let's say that it is the Thane's turn. The House Carls have already gone in this round, and so this is the uh, situation on the board. Uh, we have a Viking army that has invaded, and we want to try to take that back. So we want to move at least two armies, because we want to try to move these guys and these guys to go attack. Um, but we need to move them at least three spaces, because this one here needs to move one, two, three. So we would take uh, our card, and we do have this card here. It is our treaty card, which means that it's going to go up into the Treaty of Wedmore board, uh, possibly getting closer to the end of the game that way, but it gives us exactly what we need. It gives us two armies, and we can move them three spaces each. So we go ahead and play this, and then this would be placed over on the Treaty of Wedmore board. And so we can move this one, one, two, three, and this one will only have to move one as well. Now, the English do not have to leave troops behind in order to retain control of the things that they do. The Vikings, however, do, so that's one thing that you need to keep track of in the movement phase. Now, once all of your movement has been done, we go to the battle phase. So in a battle, you can only roll as many dice as there are models. So, for example, if there were only one house Carl in this battle, he would only be rolling one die. But since there are four house Carls there, uh, then he's going to be able to roll his full complement of two. And the same thing is true with each of the other factions. There are a maximum number of three Thane dice. Since they have four troops, they're able to roll their full complement, three Norsemen, and two berserkers so everybody's rolling their full complement of dice and after the first round these are the results we have here the thane rolled one attack one command and one flee the house carls rolled a command and an attack the norsemen rolled a command a flee and an attack and the berserkers rolled two attacks so the first thing that would happen is that for every hit rolled an opponent's army has to be removed from the battle so uh, we have two hits coming from the English, which have to be taken away from the Viking warriors. There is a rule that says that the, uh, a berserker must fall first. So one of those two in a first round of combat has to be a berserker, and then the other one can be a Norseman. So those are returned to their uh, respective factions' uh, reserve piles. Then the Vikings scored three hits, so the Housecarl and Thane factions can decide which of their units are uh, attacked the most. In this case, maybe Housecarl will say, I will take both of the hits so we can all roll our full complement of dice again. After hits are resolved, then flee results must happen. So uh, here we have one Norseman fleeing to the area, the proper area of the board, and we also have one Thane character uh, retreating or fleeing to the proper area of the board as well. And now we have the opportunity to do any control options. Now the control options are this die here. And what this basically means is that you can make a tactical retreat away from the battle. 
as long as you have a adjacent area where you already have troops in that area. So in this specific case, the Vikings cannot because they're back up against the wall, basically. They only have the sea to go to. And the uh, English players didn't leave anybody behind, so they can't go back either. So command results in this particular instance are not very useful. After a second round of dice rolling, these are the results that came back up with uh, the Vikings doing three points of damage. And then the English also did uh, three points of damage, which completely wipes out all of the Viking forces. So with that having been done, we do have one flea that has to happen. So he comes back and then uh, all of these dice are, are taken back to their specific faction with the English taking back control of Elham. And this is removed and put back onto the highest number in the victory point track. Now, in battles where the English are defending a city shire, they are able to flip a, a card over here, which represents the peasants or the common folk that are, live in the area that are going to come to the aid of defending their city. And if they are defending a city, they will flip a card and this will tell them how many of these yellow characters will be added to the army. So in this case, four uh, feared, I believe, or fired, I don't know how to pronounce that, are added to the battle, which also enables them to roll two yellow dice uh, in the battle as well. After the battle phase concludes, Thane has two cards left and they're going to go into their draw phase where they draw a third card to replenish their hand back up to three and that's the end of their turn and that progression of phases is how each round is played out again like i said earlier to a maximum number of seven rounds keeping in mind that those different uh, game ending victory conditions can happen at any given point except for the treaties uh, which will happen at the end of rounds five six and seven only and that's generally how you play 878 Vikings. Let's get to my final thoughts. So that's how you play 878 Vikings. Now, I do have to say right off the bat that this is my favorite uh, from these family of games that all pretty much use the same system from Academy. Um, why do I like this game over them? Well, first of all, this is one of the things that I like about it the most and i know you can barely see them because they're so tiny but these are miniature shoulders and they're much 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 better than just wooden blocks now i understand that some people don't care about that but i do the second pro that i that i like about this game and i didn't really touch much upon this in the overview because it's not really integral to understanding how the game flows but uh, there's there's some expandability in the decks that are built in there each deck for the basic game that i showed you is just 12 cards but they also come with um almost uh well let's see there's three six seven there's seven more cards that you can add into the deck for a more advanced experience or feel of the game and i like that expandability that comes inside the box you can play the basic game or just add those cards in or uh, you know mix and match and that type of thing so i like that about the game that you can do that it adds another level another um, uh, kind of veneer of complexity over the game additionally i like the variable player powers that each person has um each side has rather because the thane and the house carl factions are very similar in how they play and the berserkers and the nor and the norsemen are are also very um similar in how they play as well the only difference being really the kind of dice that they roll how many dice they roll and the different faces that are on the dice uh for both sides respectively i like the fact that the english have the uh, ability to use the common folk the peasants that live in the area as part of their defense when they're defending a city shire that's cool the vikings are very um militaristic in this game they are always on the offensive uh rarely are they on the defensive now that doesn't mean they don't ever defend because the english player can attack uh as well but 
uh, the English player really is concerned mainly with defense and and kind of waiting for Alfred to show up and and just holding their ground as much as possible. Maybe a couple of uh, lancer strikes to reclaim some lost ground or something to that effect. But mainly they're very defensive. My first con is going to be about the rule book. Now it's not that the rule book was poorly written, uh, so to say. It is more. Uh, that I wish there were more details added in at certain spots where uh, I was given, you know, this is how this thing works out instead of a more of a conversational. And and that's strange for me because usually I like the conversational wording of a, a rule book better than a, a more technical reading. But in this one, I wanted that because there were some things that were left up in the air as far as how they specifically were timed out or played out and that's a slight minor con for me uh, but it could just be that my brain wasn't working that great on the day but that's one of my cons i liked the old-ish non-flashy nature of the board it wasn't very picturesque but it was i think thematic in that it fit the time. I like the fact that they included both the English and the Scandinavian names for all of these different places that were in England at the time, uh, representing the struggle between those two different cultures. Um, I, I like the fact that it's a pretty short game as well. It's not very long at all. You're going to play a maximum of seven rounds. And what you can do on your turn goes pretty fast. I mean, you're, you're talking about possibly leadership, you know, reinforcement, possibly leadership, poss and then definitely movement battle, and then draw back uh, from your, you know, to replenish your hand. That goes pretty quick. And especially in a two-player game, you're involved in every single aspect of every single turn. In a three-player game, everybody's pretty much involved and also in a four player game because if your faction is present you're rolling those dice for those battles i like that about the game so it it it's a I, I don't this is what i wish most war games were now i know that's probably going to great on some people because a lot of you guys like the little details and the minutia and and all of the different things that come with you know logistical supply lines and all this other kind of stuff i am not necessarily there i don't like all of that little detaily type of stuff that will affect the game i want to come back away and, and kind of remove my focus a little bit so that um, I'm seeing more of a, the big picture that's going on. And that's what this game provides me on. So all in all, I'm going to give this high marks. We're talking, uh, as far as war games are concerned, this one is in uh, the top tier for me. Uh, so I'm going to give this an 8... I'm going to say 8.5 out of out of 10. Not quite a 9 because 9 is reserved for something that I'm like, yes, I will play this all the time if possible. Uh, and, you know, that's that's my 9 and 10. But, and I'm almost there with Vikings, but not quite because it does have kind of a large footprint. Uh, it is a little bit more involved uh, as far as the different strategies and tactics and, and me mechanisms that are used. So there is that, but I really enjoy this game a lot. So two thumbs up from me, 8.5 out of 10. Really enjoy this game, and uh, I hope that you guys have the opportunity to go out and check it out because this is a great game. So that's it from me for Vikings 878. We'll see you guys on the flip side.